Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to the Evil Within 2. So, it happened again. I have to assume it is a problem with this game. And this is very odd behavior. I've never seen any game ever do this. I've seen games crash before. But I've never seen one that seems to, after about 12 hours of being paused, literally shut down Steam. It's kind of weird. Now, it probably won't be a big deal. Um, it seems like this game checkpoints you fairly often, as any modern game should, and even old games should have, but they didn't. Um, so we're we're gonna be fine, certainly. But that that is a concern if we got say halfway through a challenge and. I assume that things aren't going to reset, that plants aren't going to be back where they are that quickly, or uh, that uh, the enemies aren't going to reset that quickly. It does feel like the game could get rather grindy if that was the case. Hmm. I guess with a reload, we do have the opportunity for perhaps better graphics. Um, so, we're still working our way through this small area and trying to find things. And these are like, hmm. I'm not supposed to climb up here and then climb up there and climb up there, am I? That looks like something you could do, but look look how I'm I'm totally almost glitching through the world completely because of that. Hmm. It seems to me like either this area is lit up more now now that we've moved the story forward a little bit or I just didn't look down this direction it really does just look like everything's a little bit brighter all of a sudden and we're gonna pick up this this is probably not going to do anything for us hmm if we look at the map we can see we are a third of the way already through so my, my only thought here is that if this game wants to be anything at all like the first game we have to walk through this door and enter a different world otherwise this, this really isn't anything like the first game and that's suspect now have bread flour, which is apparently something you can use to make smoke powder with. And we have a giant TV. Like, a TV this size that would be a tube TV. Unlikely to exist. That's a little too big. It could, uh, if you wanted a TV back th that would have been that level of technology back when tube TVs were a big thing, you would have gotten a uh, rear projection or something or a f forward projection Here we have a bathroom with a mirror that doesn't work feels like there's like hey you let's, let's let's do something here um we're like max health so there's not even a reason to to do to pick up the syringe and use it because we drink coffee and we're at full bottles so in we go we know that there will be some bad guys that are former now rogue mobius agents and there will be zombies and 
it doesn't feel really like this is going to be like a Bioshock style game where we have rogue wandering enemies and bosses. And you just hold the X. You're not going with me? No time. Hmm. I'm heading to the auto body shop to get some supplies. Meet me at the visitor center when you're done. The visitor center? Why? Hmm. I told the survivors I found earlier to go there and hide out. I need to take care of them now, while they're still scared citizens. Easier to kill them before they turn into those things, instead of after. Good thinking. So it does seem like we got a reward for doing that and it does seem like these two rogue agents instituted a level of panic perhaps in the citizens and thus by the citizens panicking we then had a situation where they turned into the monsters even faster although that wouldn't be the only thing because they were turning into monsters before these guys went crazy you see this is just a door and this door doesn't even open all right just a locked door thank you game for telling me it has a it's a locked door we're seeing the automatic closing of doors to not have to animate as much. I'm not sure if I need to come down here. If I'm just going to find a safe house or some cache of equipment. Or if I'm going to see something different. Like, a, I thought there might be a tunnel here. There is weirdness, certainly. We're in this virtual reality world. And I guess to keep people sane, they just animate technology to integrate with connecting with the rest of the world. And let's see if we do this. It says, hold to go to the marrow armory. Let's see what happens. This computer's still working. Now we have a loading screen, and I have a like high-end SSD, and it still brought up the loading scene, but it seemed like it didn't really do anything. Let's see. feels like if I was supposed to go this way I would see something so I don't know if these are supposed to be fast travel points or what and I guess the light should be off and it feels like it shouldn't shouldn't have done that marrow armory feels to me 322 Cedar Avenue so it seems like it's a simple one-way teleport now I have nails Cedar Avenue exit J3 another syringe we can't pick up or use So then what I'd like to know is yeah, full on bullets. Can we see on the map where we are? Not really. So many sequences clearly needed to be programmed to know if you had pressed a button, if you had your flashlight on. Uh, to turn off your flashlight and then turn it back on 
It doesn't even have to be like a fancy flat flickering, the battery's dying just to make it spookier, but just doing it in a way so that you're, you're, you're show, ensuring that people are seeing the same thing would be very ideal. It doesn't seem like the game is going to uh, let me have a map. And checkpoint. I guess we're going to a boss fight, maybe. And see, this just seems slightly underground and industrial. Like, it really doesn't feel like it like it's doing anything especially different than the areas we've been in before this doesn't feel like that hotel room this let's see can we open this nope i walked right up to it and pressed a seems like we might get chased So apparently breaking this is not cap not something we can do. Hmm. I kind of have plenty of bullets, so it's kind of silly to even bother with this. That's a little weird in that even with a stealth attack kill, it still didn't kill it. Hmm. And I'm playing on the easiest level, so clearly, am I supposed to shoot these? Nope, that's a waste of a bullet, but I don't think that's going to be a problem anymore. can't activate this so it does seem like there's gonna be some noise or monster jump out of that and we are in just kind of in blackness so would I want to jump down here can I jump down here I don't even think you you have the ability to jump down come to think of it yeah game is really missing some just kind of standard things you would expect from more of a stealth action game compared to a linear horror game it would be a lot more understandable if we were just playing some something like Resident Evil 7 that you couldn't jump down but then it also becomes a little questionable as to why why there are these gaps that look like you can jump down instead of perhaps being gaps that are very obvious you can't jump down okay here a sound am I hallucinating these boxes are they actually people so every time I slice a box, am I actually just slicing through some, like, tied up human? Now I have a metal pipe. We're already seeing way too much of all of this. And I don't know if perhaps the armory is one of a handful of sections of places where you actively will get a lot of collectibles and items or if perhaps this is just going to be the standard experience it really does feel like the main gameplay mechanic in this game more than anything else 
is simply simply turning the flashlight on and off I still that is not a good system this knife is totally not not the thing to to deal with and I fully expected to to kill him completely uh, kill a body completely if it wasn't moving it feels like then I should have instead stealth killed how much health did we, did we even lose? Nothing. Um, feels like I should have stealth killed this guy with the knife and then brought out my gun and just shot this this one. And it, let's see, can we open the door this way? Yeah. But we may be boned when it comes to some other things seems like maybe we need to fix the fuse box so you fire a shock bolt into them and that would open that and then we have some kind of door so let's see we have a shock bolt how can we even change our gun though? Hey. Hmm. Hold right trigger to just aim. Hmm. Okay, that's great. But is that necessary or did I just waste my shock bolt doesn't seem like I can get it back so I'm hoping that in this first instance we will it says to circle the left stick and the right stick but it doesn't seem like the symbols are even changing See, it, it seems like what you're doing is pretty much nothing until you go into like many, many circles with the right stick and left stick. Hmm. Ah, okay. So I can get it down to zero, but that's not even what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to... I'm supposed to tune the green line to synchronize with the red line. It didn't even make sense that I was controlling the one line. I thought I was controlling both of them. Okay. Yeah. And I keep expecting to be attacked by something and I keep being surprised when I'm not attacked by something. Hmm. I might as well take bullets because it seems like we're unlikely to come back at any reasonable amount of time and we now have med kits so we've introduced something more you can see a bunch of for you footprints now shotgun shells we have a Mobius cache here which just more weapon parts the only thing we really would like is the sniper rifle parts so we can fix a sniper rifle or a shotgun hmm 
Yeah, we just have a shotgun already. This is so nice. quick. I'll take it. This is so incredibly quick to have all of your weapons unlocked. It really makes this feel more like a sequel than a uh, than a true like continuation. Uh, what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say it makes the game feel a lot more like it is a a DLC element to the first game where you would have already had a character in a save file instead of a sequel to the game where you would have to reset things. Hi, well this is weird. I mean this is really weird. There's like nothing here. Why is there no jump out spook section? Is he really dead? And then we might as well just reload. And we have another one of these keys. And no buttons to push. This just feels really, really easy. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm maybe just playing the game on too easy of a mode and there would have been twice as many enemies in this room. Um, maybe twice as many enemies would have potentially given me twice as much goo, which would have potentially had me upgrade some more. Perhaps a little bit more upgrading doesn't balance out to the concept of having having to waste bullets on creatures uh, we have both seen a situation in in a very short amount of time where I've completely unloaded my handgun and run out of bullets and we've also seen a situation where I've uh, totally uh, been able to just always have a full load of bullets and not have to worry about it at all hmm speaking of not having to worry about things let's let's go ahead and take that because I don't think we're coming back this way and see that's a different symbol and yeah we're back to full bullets that really feels like nothing. Hmm. And it seems to me like maybe this underground area in itself is trying to do something like different. Let's see, we just got a whole bunch of. We have a sawed off shotgun now, we have a warden crossbow, we have a medical kit. I think we had already looked at all of this. Seems like some of this stuff is just going to be marked as new every time. Um, which, that's going to suck, certainly, if all that doesn't save. We have tutorials for opening doors and broken fuse boxes and resonant points, arrow indicators. No, that's nothing. Hmm. Is there anything else here? No. So, yeah, it just kind of feels like all the underground area is, is going to be its own little separate map. And these are effectively bespoke dungeons. 
and here we can see a tree and we're walking towards the tree and towards the light and you can see it's loading and it's loading fairly slowly to get back to the open world we do have a different a different icon of a tree which I don't know if that means anything or if that is simply just a uh, a decision artistically well I definitely can't say that that was a mistake by any means getting a shot off shotgun works nicely and it does kind of feel like you can just run through all of this hmm. Hmm. That's a little creepy. And we literally just... We literally just got flung up. Showing that the game is glitchy. Alright, fine. Yeah, and I, I don't even think it's necessary. Hmm. I, I don't even think it's necessary to, to really do anything more here. We have the f maximum amount of axes. And yeah, I guess you just run into sequences. And that's what's just going to happen. And next we are to this next area. And we are just going to work our way slowly. These sequences feel very different from the first game. It's a very large mailbox. I'm going to see if we can maybe open slash hit the mailbox. No. Okay. So it seems like we could go that direction and there definitely seems like there's something to collect or we could just follow the light and I kind of want to investigate if this door can be unlocked from this side no so they are just going to have some doors that are unlocked yeah I really don't know though what's going on with all of this it, it really does seem like it is fairly easy and, and bespoke to just wander around and do whatever you want and collect whatever you want and at least on easy modes it seems like there aren't a ton of enemies crawling around and it does seem just like doable seems very very doable hmm. well I feel like I played the first game maybe I played it on normal and that there's just kind of a dumbing down of the gameplay on casual because I feel like I really did have some challenge in the in, in normal hmm see should I waste like a shock bolt on these rats I, that didn't call anybody. I, 
I don't think rats do anything to you. I don't think they attack you or in any way, any way hurt you. But I thought if this was like Resident Evil 4, they might decide to drop something. Hmm. And let's just look around. Hmm. We have to tap A to open that. That really didn't create a lot of noise. But it created, I guess, enough. It does seem like there's kind of a fenced in section. And we may have to work our way around. And it definitely seems like there's some zombies in that direction. So they shouldn't be completely ignored. And we have this instant bottle break that happens whenever they attack you, so... Yeah, you're kind of fine. kind of just feel like there's no reason to even play subtly hmm. see that zombie seemed to have just magically jumped over a fence can I jump over this fence Yes, I can. So, do I want to go through this lit area? Or do I want to go through the fence and take on the enemies head on? I don't think I really want to take them on head on because we did. We still do have a limited amount of bullets. And that is a concern. I can take two or three people on with my max bullets, but if they decided to throw six or seven at me, it'd be a problem. I can't say that I'm hating the fact that I don't have to burn these bodies. Uh, that was a major improvement. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's even some people that complain about that and feel like the the game is drastically changed now because of it's the lacking of needing to have matches and having this limited amount of 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 bodies that you could permanently kill uh, you can just break the door with a a knife interesting And it does kind of feel like what we want to do is just kind of ignore houses. Um, you know what might be the case. I think there's something under here. Um, it might be a case that we get some kind of detector that tells us to go into specific houses or we just get some kind of... Um, why did this move if there was nothing anywhere near it? That's what I thought. Hmm. 
There goes my axe. Laying and broken on the ground. Yeah. We may get a mission that takes us to every single one of these areas. Or we may just be left with the decision that that we need to check each area. And I just got some kind of weird achievement pop-up that's in game although it didn't seem like it recorded. I got an achievement I think it was called thinning them out as if I've like made major step towards getting rid of all the zombies in the entirety of the the place there is like this achievement in Dead Rising for killing what was like 65,000 uh, zombies like the entire population of the the city that the mall was in um, oops did I not tap A fast enough apparently um, if they're going for that idea here and yet th there's barely a hundred people in the entire city of Union uh, I don't know uh, uh, that seems just weird Let's see, just, um, we've got a workbench here, so we might as well take advantage of it. Let's see, what kind of weapon upgrades can we really do? We have handgun, where we could do more ammo capacity. Well, we can't, really. We can increase fire rate, and we could increase reload time, or we can increase firepower. Firepower, clearly, the thing to increase there um, so we can't go any further with firepower and reload time probably not as useful as fire rate um, let's get this and then aiming movement speed so now we've got like a reload speed so the 120 left to upgrade the handgun um, before we get the next thing and then I don't know if we want to really get the up ammo capacity up it seems like we could on shotguns and that might be helpful or do we want to do something with the bolt gun. We haven't really even done anything with the bolt gun. The charge time I think for the bolts might be better and the range might be better if we are actually going to use the harpoon gun. Crafting wise still can't improve that. We can make we might as well just make like two um and let's make one of these that way we just have like one in total uh, and I can make like one bullet or I can make like 12 bullets and just get our capacity up and that's fine like when you look down at the bottom and see just how much stuff we actually have it's it's a ridiculous amount of gunpowder um, so so while I may have to be regulated to crafting bullets it's really not going to be much of a challenge to take people out <laughs> Hmm. 
Hmm. And yeah, I'm really not sure if this is a situation where these zombies are appearing or if they're just kind of randomly popping up or if they're scripted or if I'm just not seeing them all. Hmm. And I, I don't know how you really fix a game that feels like this because it's just in this weird point where it's it doesn't feel like the previous game at all. It just feels like a completely different game. So you make it a bigger city, sure. That that would be slightly interesting. Um, you zoom out on the scale and you have the players running around uh, a lot more. And that would be interesting. There's, there's a lot of zombies around here. And... I don't know what the right move would be because it does just kind of feel like we're going to go into the auto repair shop and then we're going to end up doing a boss fight and the door wants to close on me as soon as I'm in here we're just going to straight up be prepared See, this looks like this is a workbench, but it's not being labeled as a workbench. Hmm. You have some different 3D models of things. Certainly. Around here, with the with the tires and the car jacks and the cars well the cars have been used before and the tool tool workbenches what what are those called toolboxes yeah that's what they're called open that and inside that was nothing hmm So we're going to equip the communicator and see this other guy and just kind of see what happened to him, I guess. And somehow that feels like that's going to tell us something. under here okay get down there a new signal James where the fuck are you get your ass to the visitor center you're never gonna believe so they are gonna make you just jump back visitor to the center. visitor center hmm So it seems like we've probably got a bit of a puzzle here. And... So we have three plus that to open and turn the power on. Some weird secret lock. Resource point has been logged. Really? So, there's a whole nother safe house over here. There's a sniper rifle parts over here. There's a section we haven't seen over here. We know that there's a decent amount of zombies that we didn't run through over in this part. Hmm. Hmm. 
well. If this is just one lady. Boy, is that a lot of ragdolling. Look at how twisted that body is. And it does seem like you can look right up her skirt, which, okay. I guess that's natural and reasonable that that would happen, but usually most games don't allow for that in case you're into some kind of zombie porn. Zombie upskirt shots. Hmm. Should I use the health pack? And there's nothing in here. So this isn't the secret area or the entrance underneath. It's just a monster closet. So then where is the next thing? Hmm. Okay, that brings down the car, which gives us some gunpowder. This brings up a car, which opens the underground section. So is there anything else around here? No. keep thinking that we're going to run into something that's really challenging, but it really doesn't feel like it. The, the, the only thing I could get from now playing on casual is, and let's just look here and confirm that we could turn up the difficulty if we wanted to. We could go in for the stamina and make that more we could go in super strength um, mode which feels like it should be enabled both of those actually feel like they should be enabled but from the looks of it it seems like there's no way to increase the difficulty even like I don't even want like an achievement or anything I just would like the game to be more challenging all right and then this is weird that you just hold X to turn and you don't do anything else I feel like while well, you're So there's just like people that are completely in this world that don't know anything about Mobius. Think I think believe they're in the real world. The the only thing that would be an interesting twist here is if halfway through the game it turned out that we did play in the real world and the real world was also just a stim system also. Like that, um, that would be a slightly interesting twist. Man, I hate these Mobius crates. They, they so feel like they should be something. And then they're nothing. We're back to handgun, right? Um, do we want to sneak up on this guy or do we want to? See if maybe there's a way to kill them all. I 
Honestly, it feels like I could probably just hit them all with... Let's see. We have this with a shock bolt. Can we equip this? And can we fire? Are we going to go through here? Hmm. Honestly, it's probably just going to be easier to shoot them. Let's see. Just get a nice headshot and... The only real hope mistake here would be if it turned out that you can't ever go and uh, pick up any like bullets or any green goo from that enemy group hmm. this guy, these guys do feel just kind of blind Now have a union security card. Security card shows a grid of authentication codes to access secure Mobius locations. Okay. What's this? Some kind of cipher? Hmm. So over here we have that door. Down here we have where the zombie crawled. Over here, we have a bunch of zombies that we attacked. Back over this way. We have more things to collect. More maps. It, it almost feels like what they're using the stems for is that they're kidnapping people and putting them in, in the... Uh, union system to like spy on them and investigate them get information out of them we have a disposal request um enter unauthorized mobius area and witness sensitive materials capture and reprogramming was unfortunately not an option was forced to institute zeta 5 emergency measures request disposal of unit at union auto repair so they just killed the guy basically capture and reprogramming seems to be sometimes an option was this some kind of explosive bolt all right we will, we will use that almost certainly on some kind of boss eventually and I don't know if I'm supposed to go up here first or if I'm supposed to go through here first. So let's go through here first. Um, well, I can kind of read that fairly easily, but I'm not exactly sure how this is supposed to work because it says one and then blank so let's go with 29 and then 58 hmm oh wait let's look at the door b34 okay i get this now so it's kind of hard to read 98 I think and then 78 hmm is that 
we zoom in a little bit game uh, like I'm playing this on on my TV 10 feet away and I, I more and more have to keep saying this and I, I really do need to think of a new setup at some point uh, because just even though that's not really too hard to read it's still a little hard to read so I'm using my camera on my phone to try and take a photo and see if I can read it from this it could be B36 with a 76 B30 uh, B yeah let's go B3676 alright Hmm. See B three four. Hmm. Can we look at maybe the files over here? Let's see, not that one. Hmm. Hmm. Inventory key items hmm B 98 76 I feel like I've done this. Hmm. Thirty eight seventy six. Hmm. Yeah, even from like really zoomed in point, I'm still having trouble reading it and yet it, it's just weird all right so i'm just gonna have to literally walk up to the to the tv and read it so i'll mute myself and i'll be right back i guess okay I'm back so yeah right in front of the screen it's easy to read possibly some of this also has to do with the resolution like if I lowered the resolution on the game maybe it'd be a little bit easier but now I have a nice clean picture and so B3 is 96 and B4 is 76 so 96 76 this is a problem with video games though it, it definitely is a problem with with computer video games where they just love to put these kind of kind of things up where you're, you're really just gonna have a hard time what is this High grade weapons parts. These components are higher quality than standard weapons parts. They can unlock a weapons upgrade potential. 
which probably is a good move because I probably will need to upgrade my handgun fairly quickly. Um, it does feel like we will be just using the, the handgun throughout the entirety of the game. So I'm going to keep that image handy, by the way, because it's fairly obvious that we will run into some other doors. Where? Now we're at Mitchell and Sons Construction. And we have a thing. Um, we don't have a jump button though. So we have this trip wire, but kind of nothing we can do with the trip wire. And boy, does the trip wire not really look nicely animated. So, I'm going to just slice my knife at it and hmm like I see that part is this Mitchell or son And clipped right through the door, right through the wall, which I think has him dropping green goo on the other side of this wall. And yeah, I've just probably lost that green goo forever. Not that I think it really matters. And you kind of know there's no zombies here, too. In a weird way. Like, you, you just know that you are now safe because if you weren't safe, the game wouldn't, wouldn't have the eyeball and you'd hear the growling. Unless they want to introduce a stealthy, quiet character where you're kind of fine. And yeah, my only real hope was that maybe... If I walked away far enough from that, that would have moved and adjusted itself on the geometry, but nah. Alright, now we're back to being unsafe. Hmm. And this guy just has bullets on him. These guys wander and stumble so much. This guy has like shotgun bullets on him, not even regular bullets. But I don't really feel like we are at a point where it makes sense to... It doesn't fully make sense to start using the shotgun. I mean, I guess we could probably equip the shotgun and then let's see, equip the shotgun, press that button to see if we could reload. But no. I think it is still way easier to have the handgun and if we have to, we'll just field craft more bullets. Um and yeah, we might be walking into a fight, but I don't really know if this is going to be too dangerous of a fight where I would need more than a couple of bullets. We are clearing out a lot of these things. Any more crates to break? Hmm. 
So we're gonna move this, but first we're gonna run through here. And boy, does it really feel like you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again, though. This feels like a visual improvement over the first Dead Rising game. Perhaps not much of a visual improvement over the last Dead Rising game, or the latest one. Uh, but with considerably fewer zombies, at least on casual, and considerably fewer new concepts or ideas uh, the first game by far felt more imaginative more creative hmm. and what do we have here a in-game ad for something apparently how many times can I hit this to get green dew out of it Hmm. Like, it's not even gonna drop a explosive or anything. It's just gonna stop ejecting green goo after a while. All right. So we are over here, which. And we are. We can then open this. And. The resonance point has been logged. Over. In this area. Okay. And there's that green goo that went through the wall, I guess. Hmm. I don't know how much more I want to really play because it's not going to be like a save point. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we... Well, we, we are noticing that something here. Uh, this, we get to at least figure out how strong the shotguns are. I don't know if it's really worth killing the killing the the rodents and yeah we're just kind of looking for a checkpoint that would be about it seems like we're following this story and unless the story takes us through another chapter it seems like there is this kind of weird chapter that's happening here and we now have a red gel which those are going to be few and far between So we've got some other kind of creature and we're right next to the break so it's not like this train is going to take you anywhere and it does just kind of seem like we are 
not really going to run into anything. Just, this is just another area to wander around and see, can we down this way? We're just going to run into some more zombies that don't want to attack immediately. And yeah, this rat runs around way too much for it to realistically be something you try to kill. It, it seems to move around way too fast. And it's not like you have a flash grenade in Resident Evil 4 like you did in Resident Evil 4. This thing just moves way too fast all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the train wander through this area see if maybe we find something more go check out this rogue signal here which we can save as a waypoint and just really hope the game does not crash before we get back to the save point eventually we are gonna set this as our new base of operation and then work our way towards this resonance and probably work to the sniper rifle parts but really not a lot here even if this area that's foggy gets expanded and this section gets more expanded on we need the whole city to become a lot bigger otherwise this whole experience is going to be really really short like it says we have four hours of playtime I would put us closer to actually three hours of playtime uh, but apparently the game seems to disagree with that anyways that's gonna be it for this recording as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites there's a bunch of links down below and if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.